Have you got the flywheel block off tool after you remove the starter and bolt it down the put the motor up on top dead center? Just watch the cam lobes when they're both down on the number one and the pistons up top and lock it in. If not, make some homemade deal to hold the dampener. I'm used to using a piece of quarter inch steel. It also used to hold rear end yokes. And just a couple 5 8 bolts double nutted. That bolted to the bar and then a couple nuts to uh, ride that ridge in there. That nuts on there are pretty hard but not impenetrable. I put a little spacer to keep it off the dampener. You don't want to put any stress on this outside pulley anywhere. Knock it out of balance. As long as there's a little gap between the bar and the pulley, it'll be all right. And use a three-quarter inch drive ratchet with a 15-16 socket or 24 millimeter, and probably three or four foot of pipe and break that thing loose. Hopefully. If it don't damage the dampener in some fashion, it's not impossible. But you either buy the right tools or take the risk of having to replace things you tear up. I get by so without destroying anything. I used a piece of wood against the frame to support this bar. It's kind of resting against the air cleaner just a little bit before it hits that piece of wood, but if it mashes on it far enough, it'll hit hit this block of wood I got over here, so it won't tear the air cleaner up. It's a bunch. Just make sure you're not getting into anything. Not around these sensors or pushing on this outside pulley. It's got a rubber vulcanized rubber seal it balances this thing and you don't want to interfere with that at all just make sure the socket's flat against that bolt head or you'll have a problem possibly that's pretty good yep that that'll take you a spool and we fun tighten that thing back down Just like downtown. That's a big old boy. A new bolt has to be bought. This is a one-time use bolt. They're not expensive at all. You probably hold this whole thing up by that bolt. Probably a couple of them. Like that. Now I had that little punch against this inside hub part, not against the outer pulley on the inside of that rubber. Just keep from you could even chip chip this and it'll eat the belt up. Looks good. Make a note of the depth of that crankshaft inside of this dampener. Should be about 125 thousandths. Let 
I'm getting a reading of about a hundred and four thousandths. Just put that on the side of the dampener and let that pin go down and touch the nose of the crankshaft. 125 thousandths, about an eighth of an inch, just 105, so it's just 10 thousandths of an inch short of eighth inch. And I think specs are between 96 and 135 or something, 150, I don't know, somewhere in there. Should be in this ballpark anyway. I'm going to go ahead and remove this upper radiator hose. I put a yellow mark on it and the radiator indicating which end this is and exactly what position it goes back on there. These red things leave fibers on everything and I'm going to have to clean that whole valley area out but it's not a critical area that I can't clean that's really complicated. Just check it for lint in there. And that's why I've got paper towels in the lifter areas. That's not as a problem as, as these red shop towels are. I just used a three-jawed puller to pull the crank dampener off. And now you can use the bigger fingers or, or whatever. Just three will do it. I put a just a big bolt in the center of the crank for it to twist against so it won't damage the end of this as a spacer. And pulled it off of there. Orientation doesn't matter because this is externally balanced for this engine no matter where it's setting. It's got three little flat places to catch hold of. I, I don't know, it comes off about like they all do. It wasn't as bad as that crank bolt. I'm going to go ahead and take the timing cover bolts out. The two's already out around the oil pan. And then there's just eight more left on the face of it. One behind the air conditioning compressor is a little sketchy, but it comes out. Yeah, let's see what happens. Okay. That was a pretty good fight getting into that. Gotta make it hard. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it again. I don't know if the chain's sketchy or not. Camshaft sprocket bolts are one time use only. I don't know, the chain kind of looks a little hammered. That's super nice. There's a timing alignment mark. oil gallery plug getting warmer this assembly is spring loaded and when it's taken loose the sprocket and the center needs to be kind of held together and pulled off as one piece or problems will arise That's nice. I've went as far as I can go with the motor in the vehicle before the quality of the repair is going to start suffering. So I'm going to jerk the motor out of it, put it on a stand so I can deal with it accordingly. Uh, the oil pan's going to have to come off. Uh, See, it's got a problem with the oil pan gasket leaking anyway, which it is. Um, 
around the sides and especially on this back corner around the oil filter and probably the oil line block off leaking as well and I'm gonna go ahead and change the seals on it and get a new oil pan seal while I got it off and the oil pan's probably gonna be full of carbon anyway the pickup tube sure's got a lot of residual carbon on it so anyway I'm gonna start unbolting the air conditioner and the related bracket and take a starter off of it and get the torque converter bolts out and start working on the bell housing bolts to support the transmission with a jack take the engine mounts loose and get the related line brackets off the oil pan wire harnesses and any other plug-ins on the motor that's nice the uh... the wool oh. will not come out of there without taking the oil pan off of it you could try and screw with that pickup tube with bolt but I don't I'm not going to do it and I, I can clean this deck off a lot better and clean out any residual fuzz from those shop towels by turning the block on its side and I, I really want to get a exhaust that's leak on that back manifold port and I want to take a drill brush and clean it off and check those manifolds for flatness with a straight edge so I don't have a problem when I go back on the air conditioning compressor has four bolts in it one on the bottom should stay in it before reassembling because it won't come out while it's in there and then one underneath is something else to get out I used a gear wrench to get it out of there it took a while pull it back against the frame ideally I guess could have hooked a refrigerant machine up and pulled the refrigerant out of it and just took the lines off of it and there's a harness running down the driver's side of the engine block that needs to dress and held on by a little retainer there and there's some sensors in the back behind the engine mount I'll get them when I go underneath for the bell housing bolts already got the front harness off the oil pan and while I'm on this driver's side I'm going to take the opportunity to blast those three 15 millimeter bolts off the engine mount to the frame and catch whatever bell housing bolts I can in the back on top probably the transmission fill stick bolts Down underneath the passenger side, unclip the transmission lines and the wire harnesses, and uh, pull in bolts for 15 millimeter holding the transmission lines to the bell housing, and get the 13 millimeters holding the starter up there. Mouse over the video and hit the circle I to continue to part two of the video.